Welcome to our online worship service. We thank Paul Kuhlman for coming again this week for our in-person worship as last week we were at Camp Luther enjoying a family vacation. This week I'm on continuing education at Trinity Lutheran Church as we study African American hymnody and what it has and how it has shaped our church. Wanted to thank again Pastor Paul for coming in and sharing his leadership and his thoughts. Wanted to let you know that we are still looking for a nursery attendant, especially during the 1045 worship service. We are getting ready for our seventh annual Grace Car Show, Truck and Motorcycle Show. So come and enjoy. A reminder that our annual meeting is July 17th. It's coming quick, folk. We'll be here before we know. We also are thankful that we continue to know God's grace and share it abundantly with others. Let us enjoy our time of worship. Salvation and resurrection. 
Please mask up if you would like to sing. sight. 
Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive the recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite us to stand for the gospel acclamation. It is found on the bottom of page five. We share this acclamation together. Alleluia, alleluia. Welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your soul. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes out with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can I compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Boys and girls, today I brought with me an empty canister. It's from one of our eternal lights, and we hope and pray that we know God's light, that it is eternal in our lives, even when it goes out, even when it is all used up, even when it is empty. For you see, the earth produces even when it looks like something and everything is wasted away and gone. I was at a pastor's retreat once, and I saw this in action. In the retreat, we burnt down a candle, and it was all gone. But before it was all gone, we went to a beekeeper, and we took some of the wax off the bee hive. And as we took that wax, we melted it down and went through all these different stages. And before the candle went out, before it was completely gone, and it was barely burning, it looked like it was going to go out at any second, we had already fashioned a new eternal light and put the wick in, the wax, made the awesome ability, and the person leading us says, this is what I do all the time. And then he showed us the huge amount of candles that he had already really prepared for the whole year and beyond. It's amazing to see that we have a God who gives us all that we need, 
more than we need, even when we think it's empty, even when we think it's dead and gone, God produces an abundance. Let us pray our echo prayer. Dear God, help us always to see your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you next week. Grace from the Creator who made us. Peace be to you from Christ Jesus. And mercy be with you from the Holy Spirit who indeed sustains us and gives us life. The earth produces on its own. Thank God. Literally, the earth produces on its own. That's one of the things we hear in our gospel reading today. Every once in a while, Jesus gives us a break, a break from the demands of bringing about the kingdom of God, a break from the commands of making sure God's reign really does reign, a break from everything that has to be done and knowing what needs to be done. I hear a bit of respite in this week's gospel text and much needed rest from the persistence and resistance and vigilance necessary to ensure that the kingdom of God does not end up in the periphery of our vision or even out of our vision. Every once in a while, we need a break, right? And this seems just about the right time in the rhythms of the church year. We have transitioned into summer schedules we have likely made it through most graduations and graduation parties. We even get to acknowledge graduates and send them off with care. And while we are reluctant, hesitant, even unwilling to imagine some time off from our busy days, Jesus reminds us of a truth we often forget. The earth produces on its own. This is the reign of God, which grows automatically, and regardless of our intentions and efforts, God's love wins, really without any effort of us. Quite honestly, it is a relief, not a pass, not an excuse for time off, but an essential prompt so that we never become over-reliant on our own energies, our own works, our own talents. Once we start to think that by our own reason and strength, by our own planning and programming, by our own labors and care, we share in the kingdom of God, we have forgotten what it means to talk about the kingdom of God. The kingdom where Jesus promises life even in death suffering and loneliness. I am sure Gail knows all about God's grace in the heavenly realm as he experienced it here on earth also. Jesus invites us to give ourselves a break that sometimes our work needs only to be good enough, that sometimes it's okay to say that our, we can only meet the bare needs that sometimes it's just fine to remember that the kingdom of God indeed comes without our prayers, without our best determinations, or our best work. Thank God. Thank God the earth produces on its own. It's rather easy with this parable, I suspect, to make some comparable moves to our own lives when it comes to what is within our capacity to change and make things happen, especially when we are coming off of COVID, when we realize that we really could do little at times during those darkest of days. I remember when I could not go into the hospital. I could not visit anyone in a facility like I did with Gail on Friday. I could not hug anyone or even give a simple handshake. I remember how tired I was on Wednesday because I took Anna to her summer camp job at Camp Luther last week. I knew our home would be more empty without her, 
and yet I still find myself saying, I wonder what Anna wants for dinner tonight. When is Anna going to get up? It seems awfully late for her to be getting up. Then I realize that she is not there. I knew it would happen in theory without my making it so. My youngest, my daughter, who is in her second year of college and how out of the house again she is because COVID protocols are now more relaxed all by herself. But as a parent, I wanted to help make it happen. I wanted to mark the day of leaving with something extraordinary. But when I realized that I saw my daughter's leaving, as I looked and gazed at Pinky, her oldest doll, just sitting in her room, I got a little misty-eyed. I am just beginning to realize that it all happens on its own, and it all happens on her own. But I have to admit that for me, this is an exceedingly difficult truth to accept, that things can come about, and quite well, thank you very much, without me. I don't know about you, but excelling in excellence, evidence of effort and clear dedication of accomplishments are that by which, well, I assess myself and my worth at times. In fact, I am much better at finding value and meaning in my doing than I am in the results of my doing. I cannot tell you how many times this is the conversation of the day. You know how I located my importance, how I determined my value in crossing off the items on my to-do list, which, by the way, that to-do list seems always to be rather long, and thinking about the earth produces automatically. I remember the story I heard. It came from the amazing preacher of our church. She shared with us why she was doing what she was doing at the time in her life. I'm living out my call, not my can. I paused. I said, why? What? What can? I am living out my call, not my can. It was profound. It was unexpected. I am living out my call, not my can. It was so meaningful. So much of our lives, our calls as baptized children of God is about demonstrating that we can do rather than what we are called to do. Makes sense. Ability is often much more easily demonstrated than living out our vocation. So our default is doing rather than being, lists rather than living, and quantifiable measurements rather than qualifiable moments. I realized this week that I will always struggle with the earth produces on its own. I will resist it at every turn, maneuvering, manipulating, managing, producing, instead of just trusting. And so I will be forever grateful for this overlooked parable unique to Mark, unassuming in its proclamation of the gospel. And I will keep in mind and on my heart that much of life just like the kingdom of God produces all by itself. I hope that our graduates, young people, newly transitioned people can be successful. But my greater hope is that we, every one of us, can trust and depend on the grace of God and the abundance that is given freely to each and every one of us. Let us know these promises in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite us to stand for the Apostles' Creed. We will remain standing for prayer as it is much easier to share peace that way than sitting down. 
We confess our faith as one body in Christ Jesus. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, and our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. before the triune God in prayer. Holy God, you plant the seeds of faith in every nation. Enliven your church so that the good news of your grace may root and grow throughout the world. Show strength and wisdom to our church leaders, including bishops Elizabeth and Craig, assistants David and Roseanne, our Synod Companion, Grace Lutheran Church, East Towers, St. Ambrose Catholic Church, Delton, Minister of Music, Cindy, and Pastor Ken. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creator, even the trees, shrubs, and flowers delight in your goodness. From the depths of the soil to the highest mountain, bring forth new plants. Restore growth to places suffering drought. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Judge of nations, we pray for our leaders and those in power. Grant them the, the ability to regard those under their charge with humility, dedicating their lives in service to others. Protect the lives of those who serve in the military, including Parker Stansel, Cody and Marina Crawford, Austin and Aaron Hensley. Alexis and Carlos Garcia, Brady and, Brady and Cynthia Rudisell, Joel Taggart, Kayla and Lance Chimpaco, and Julia Eric. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Divine Comforter, you show compassion to those in need and provide relief to those who call on you. Bless all who suffer, especially people trapped in cycles of poverty, and homelessness, including Vicki Argo, Walter Brown, Gary Burdick, Penny Burdick, Chris Bush, Cherie Clements, Allison and Baby John Donkey, Mike Fruth, the Gary Edwards family, Carl Golnick, Lisa Golnick, Mike Hoppy, Wendy Kimball, Douglas and Maddie Lighty, Joe Longcore, Bill Melcher, Vicki Saucier, Mike Shoemaker, Tim Sullivan, Myra Thomas, the family of Gail Norway, George Ulrich Jr., Deborah Wilkie, Christy Winnick, and Eve Wright. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Sovereign God, this house of worship belongs to you. We give thanks and pray for our church musicians. We dedicate to you the joyful noise that comes from this place, the cries of children, the melody of voice and instruments, and the songs from our hearts. You may share your own prayers at this time. Gracious God, we give you praise and celebrate that we have graduates. We are thankful for Dave, Gavin and Grayson, may they know the wonderful love that you share extravagantly with them and that you place your Holy Spirit upon them and lead and guide them.
organization we heard with uh, granddaughter yesterday. And uh, I said that we believe in her and guide her into the future. We're a little confused right now, but hopefully she'll get on the right track. So please be with her and the rest of her family as she goes through her transition. Eternal God, we give thanks for our ancestors in the faith who are now at home with you. We look forward to that day when we are reunited in your new creation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace. At this time, we're still standing and sharing. Sorry. We're going to get there when we get to do hugs again. Peace. Peace. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by the glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the angel, choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the host of heaven, we praise your name forever. Amen. Amen. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim that Jesus is among us. Amen. Amen. Gathered by the Holy Spirit, let us now pray the prayer that Jesus first taught us. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Thanks be to God. I invite you to sanitize your hands if you so desire. And when you're prepared, you can take out the bread. The body of Christ given for you. Thanksgiving, the blessing of the Holy Trinity, 
One God be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. I again invite you to mask on if you would like to sing the hymn. Go tell it on the mountain. 